there, this is Daniel Scranton, and I'm going to channel the Arcturian Council. consciousness because we see you as an aspect of ourselves. When you go through life looking at every other that you encounter as another aspect of yourself, it is much easier to stay interested in life. When you go through life in a very ego-oriented way and you think that there is a very solid and stable line between you and everyone else you encounter that's when you can get lonely, bored uninspired and uninterested in life. But when you experience someone else's success as your success and someone else's failure as your failure, then you know you are connected and then you can 
maintain that interest in life. You are a part of a living organism called the human collective consciousness. You contribute to that consciousness and you benefit from what others contribute to it. So every experience then can be made available to you if you take the time to tune in to that which is a very large aspect of who you really are. You have a choice always in this life. If you are not involved with another person romantically and you would like to be and you see two people who are obviously romantically involved with each other walking down the street you have a choice it may not seem like you have a choice in that moment, but you do. You want to start making the choice to see the happiness of others as your own before you take your lonely feeling self outside to a place where you're going to see a lot of couples kissing and cuddling. You want to tune yourself to this truth that everyone else and what they are living is also yours to glean from it what you will. Even your fictional stories, whether they be in book, movie, play, television, or puppet show form, it doesn't matter. They can also be a way for you to connect to a character that seems very real. As you suspend your knowing that these are lines and actors and actresses and characters and that there's music and a set design and lots involved in getting you to feel something, then you can enjoy a feeling of connection to that story. That story is your story. That writer or creator of whatever it is you're witnessing for entertainment got that story from the collective consciousness which you are a part of. And all of your past life selves have contributed and in some ways are still contributing to the human collective consciousness. So you can become more interesting as a person by delving into history books. Or you can do so by 
watching that happy couple share an ice cream cone and imagine that you are feeling what they are feeling. You don't have to make the choice of separation and jealousy, envy, and resentment. You can be the bigger person, the more expanded version of you, and experience it all, making you more interesting and life more interesting at the same time. That is how we, without physical bodies, without a home to lay down in a bed inside, stay interested. We do it because we know that we are living everything that you are. And to us, that's exciting. We are the Octarian Council. And we have enjoyed connecting with you. because I, I feel like I need to drink this water before I get into it um, for my, my, my throat and everything. And this is not uh, sparkling water, this is flat. And it still makes me uh, burp. <laughs> uh, I had a, a, a tremendous day today and uh, I want to thank all of you for the healing energy, for the love, for the suggestions that you make about how I can move forward. Um, I didn't have any pain today, not anything like uh, I was experiencing last night. So I thought I was probably in for a rough night's sleep, but I actually slept really well. I got up once during the night, put a little oregano oil on my, on my gums in there. Um, just the tiniest amount. Um, I saw that some of you also uh, know about oregano oil and use it. Um, it's very powerful. You got to be really, really careful with it when you first uh, start uh, playing with it because it uh, can burn. Can I got some on, on the corner of my mouth, <laughs> and uh, you know it hurts. <laughs> it can really do a number. I got some of the things that were suggested um, today. Um, and going to look into some of the other things that were suggested. One of the things that my uh, client recommended via email, which I really appreciated, was just sort of waiting it out. Because, um, you know, you hear the, the side of the story from the dentist. And they say, you know, we want to do these things to your teeth to protect them now because they're, they're so, um, you know, fragile in the state from all the eroding of the enamel and tooth from, from chewing all those years. Um, and, and my client pointed out that sometimes these pains will come after you get a some kind of dental work, even um, a cleaning, she said. And I just had the bridge put in up here. And then the uh, things that make my 
bite better <laughs> so these teeth are not touching anymore when I chew, which is nice. But uh, she was saying that the, the effects of having work done like that can mean pain in your mouth um, even for three to four months after. Um, and, and uh, you know, that's why I didn't go to the dentist. These are, all the, they, these are the things, I, I reasons I did not go for 20 years. Um, maybe even, yeah, I think 20. Uh, but, you know, I don't do everything they tell me to do at, at the holistic dentist I go to. I, uh, I said, no, I'm not getting braces. I said, no, I'm not putting plastic in my mouth every day for 22, 23 hours a day <laughs> till my teeth are, are such that they're not touching in the front. Um, you know, I, and they want to put veneers behind my front teeth to protect the, the pulp. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to do it. Uh, it right now, the, the, the cost of that is, is crazy, crazy expensive. Um, oh, and, oh, and we had such a great day with Talea today too, um, out and about, she was so good and, uh, is really like I, when I was bathing her tonight, I had like the longest experience of her laughing that I've ever had which was so nice, just her really giggling away. And I um, had a nice chat with my dad and sister while we were out. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, this morning, you know, I, oh, first of all, I talked about that podcast with Lewis Black, which just, Lewis L-E-W, IS, if you've never heard of him before, Black, on Pete Holmes's um, podcast called You Made It Weird, which you can get anywhere. I mean, these podcasts are everywhere now. Um, that was so good, that conversation. And then I tell you guys about that. And then the next one I listened to, again, a comedian who yells a lot. He yells a lot on the, on the show Curb Your Enthusiasm. He plays uh, Larry David's manager. And he and his wife are always yelling at each other. And he and Larry and Ted Danson and all these, these awesome uh, people are always yelling at each other. And it's really funny. Um, maybe not what you would, you would consider very spiritual, but I love it. Uh, same, same guy who created the, the show Seinfeld is behind Curb Your Enthusiasm. So anyway, Jeff Green is the character on the show. Jeff Garland is his real name, G-A-R-L-I-N. He has a Netflix special out right now, which I've been watching. It's really funny. Uh, called Our Man in Chicago. And then he, uh, he was on, whose podcast? Jeff Ross's podcast. Uh, Jeff Ross, the roasting guy, the guy who does all the roasts. And Jeff Garland, again, blew me away just like Lewis Black never would have expected this guy to have so much depth and and like and these guys what's really cool about it is they're just so nonchalant about these these experiences and these approaches to life that they've discovered that are really like uh life-altering changes that they've made in their lives. Um, so that's another one I recommend. And then I did the thing this morning that the Arcturians were talking about. I saw, I, I, I felt for, because I don't usually, you probably think I have the Arcturians in my ear all the time, but I don't. I channel, and then I'm not channeling. I'm not, I'm not one of those psychic people who's got, you know, guides always uh, chatting away <laughs> at them. So I, but I did it this morning about my teeth. And then the, cause I could have called and said, Hey, I have a day off today. Can I see the dentist about these teeth today? And the, and the message I got from the Arcturian council was very simple. It was wait. So I listened and, and I didn't go and 
um, that message I got, that email, all of the comments that I've read so far have just been great. Um, I, I did have a problem with the person blaming it on veganism and I could go into that for a long time. I'm not going to do that right now, but, um, vegan, the vegan lifestyle has been under attack a lot lately and people have their own experiences and this person points that out. It's their own experiences they're talking about on YouTube, but that's, that's very anecdotal and it's not, it's not science. It's not proof. Um, there are lots of uh, omnivores who have lots of health problems too, but then people don't automatically say, oh, it's because you're an omnivore. <laughs> it's because you're eating all this stuff. Um, so anyway, I, I'm not going to get into it too much, but it does, um, it does bother me because I don't think, like I said in my, my video about what, what we eat and not eat, is um, we're not all the same. We're not all the same people. Not, not all vegans are the same. I'm a raw vegan, only organic, don't drink any alcohol, don't take any drugs, don't smoke marijuana, meditate every day, exercise, pull-ups or pull-ups every day. Um, plus, I, I run or hike every day now. Um, so not, not all vegans eat the same. A lot of vegans eat soy, grains, uh, refined sugar, all sorts of things that never go into my body. So it, it does, and it, it does bother me because it's, it's very reductionist. And, and I, and I also just feel like I've gotten that too many people are, are sort of blaming things on veganism. And um, I'm not one of the vegans who goes around saying, you all need to be vegan because, um, you know, it's better for this, better for that, better for you. But, um, but so I'm not on the, on the point of view of like, I want to convert everybody, but I also don't like it when people assume that I don't know my own body. I'm not listening to my own body. I didn't. I told you that last night. I didn't listen to my own body when I was eating too many strawberries and too many tomatoes in one sitting and in general. And my teeth definitely paid the price. So I, I do think that that's a lesson that you could learn from any, any diet you're on is listen to your body. If your body's telling you don't keep eating this because... Your stomach hurts or you're, you're getting lots of phlegm coming up or whatever is the, the signal from your body, then listen to it. But, um, but I, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just really tired of, of the, the anti-veganism. It's like, we're not hurting anybody, like leave us alone. <laughs> I don't know, I know it's meant, and I have friends who do it too. And I know it's meant with the best of intentions. So I, I do recognize that, but I also, but it also does bother me. So I'm just going to say that, you know, it bothers me when I see those, you know, people telling me that I don't know what I'm doing in some regard, <laughs> because I'm not, I, I started researching the raw food diet when I was 25 and I'm 47 now. So um, I made a lot of mistakes when I first got into the raw food diet. A lot, there was a lot that I did wrong. And someday I'll make a whole video about it that will be really long. But uh, I think I've said enough for now. And uh, I just wanna, I just wanted to get that off my chest because it, it, it did bother me. It was only one person and, I'm, and I apologize to that one person for calling you out because <laughs> You're not the, the reason that I feel the way that I do, when, but it's, it's like I've, I've just heard enough about it to, um, for it to have affected me in a, in like a, in a cumulative way. Um, you know, one of the things I did 
because I was, I was just curious a while back as I said, okay, well, let me see if there are examples of people who've been vegan for a long time and are healthy. And I Google it, first person I found, raw, just like me, 30 years, and said, hey, you know, you've, you do have to take supplements on this diet. And that's something I do recommend. And I, and I do that. Uh, I do take supplements. And I bought uh, Sheila G today on someone's recommendation, which I haven't been taking. But I take a lot of supplements. And someday I will put all of those on my website too, like all the stuff I get uh, on Amazon and put in my smoothie and take at night uh, my whole vitamin, mineral, supplement regimen. But um, someday that'll happen. Anyway, thank you all for <laughs> listening to the me babble. I'm surprised how many of you uh, watch these to the bitter end, <laughs> but I appreciate it. And uh, YouTube likes it when my I have longer <laughs> videos that get more minutes. They they're always measuring these things. So thank you for continuing to watch the uh, the channel ramble after the video after the <laughs> message is over. And uh, I will see you back here tomorrow night. Blessings to all of you. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment on this video.